in the last class we were discussing uh, the assignment i think we finished all of it essentially once you determine the coefficients it's a matter of uh, delaying the signal and adding them and plotting the i diagrams and obviously you see that the i will be open compared to what was the input to the equalizer and both in the 50% and the 10% case it's just that with the 10% of opening you need more taps to open the i so that is uh, pretty much it any other questions on the assignment is the code working now so the question is how do you say a pm has uh, lesser isi compared to uh, nrz i mean the binary data transmission okay and here we are comparing both for the same data rate okay so the symbols for uh, pam4 are transmitted uh, for a longer duration binary if it is 1 gigabits per second then pam4 it is at uh, half giga samples per second but each symbol is 2 bits now if you look at the impulse response of the channel so let's say it will have some uh, some shape like this or whatever i don't know what shape it has but it usually has some shape of this sort this is the impulse response and for uh, to calculate the pulse response for binary transmission you convolve this with a 1 nanosecond pulse so how do you convolve you just uh, flip this overlap with this and integrate so that is the idea so roughly speaking the response may do something like this what will be the total duration of the response let's just for illustration say that the channel re impulse response goes to zero after some time t not we know that it never goes to zero but we can say that we can ignore everything after t zero what will be the length of uh, it will be the sum of this 1 nanosecond and t0 is that correct or no is that okay so the pulse is 1 nanosecond wide and the impulse response is uh, impulse response extends from 0 to t0 the convolution of these two what is the duration of that it will be the sum of the durations okay for instance if you in discrete time let's say this had uh, n samples and this had m samples this would have n plus m minus 1 samples similarly in continuous time if this has t not and this is 1 the resulting response will last for t not plus 1 so here is the cursor there is the post cursor isi there is the pre cursor isi and so on so this is for binary this is the unit pulse response for pam4 what do you do you convolve the impulse response with a pulse which is twice the width so the duration of that that will also follow some shape like this i don't mean it will follow the exact same shape but maybe it has something like this but it will it will last 2t0 plus 1 okay which is not exactly twice this and uh, oh sorry t0 plus uh, 2 t0 plus 2 nanoseconds so now the cursor is here but then to look at the post cursor you go 2 nanoseconds away okay so because you are going farther away from the peak it will decay faster so if you want to do the time domain thing this is how you have to do it so let's say the channel impulse response lasts a certain amount of time you can say the pulse response lasts the pulse width plus that amount of time okay now you double the pulse width it will again last the doubled pulse width plus the same amount of time as before t not so as a fraction of the double pulse width this is smaller so this as a fraction of uh, the red pulse here as a multiple of the red pulse this is smaller compared to this as a multiple of the 1 nanosecond pulse so that's how you do it in time domain or in frequency domain you can say the channel is a low pass filter now if you are transmitting uh, and roughly speaking i said that to transmit 1 uh, giga symbols per second to transmit at 1 giga symbols per second the channel has to be flat up to half a gigahertz okay so let's say half a gigahertz is here so this is the type of attenuation this is the attenuation that the binary data sees now if you are transmitting pam4 at a lower rate you should look at the attenuation at 0.25 gigahertz okay so the attenuation is smaller so the isi can be isi will be smaller or rather you need uh, to equalize this you need to undo this much of attenuation to equalize this you need to undo this much of attenuation anything else so that's a more general question regarding bitter rate so what is you have a channel and you have some noise what is the likely bitter rate that you get right so each symbol represents 2 uh, bits and if it is random bits you can uh, say what the bitter rate is finally 
there are four symbols let me call that uh, let me denote that by each symbol could denote bit 0 0 0 1 1 0 or 1 1 so let's say you transmitted this and with because of an error it could become this this or this so in these two cases only one of the bits is in error if it goes from here to here both bits are in error so from that you can uh, map the symbol error rate to bit error rate if you know the likelihood of each symbol and you know how the likelihood of error of each symbol you can calculate the error probability of each bit this will uh, uh, go through the transmitter circuitry that we have designed so far and fill up some details and wrap up the design of the transmitter okay that is the transmit equalizer so we already know that uh, we make the transmitter using a number of differential pairs in parallel and we vary the tail current of each differential pair to vary the coefficient okay coefficients of the equalizer and we also know how to do that so we said that uh, we will like to keep the differential pair itself clean and compact and we switch the current in the reference branch of the differential pair so there are some more practical problems that we will have to deal with and some of them we have already discussed so diff pairs in parallel tail currents are tuned and the reference branch current varied this is to minimize tail node capacitance and to keep the swing constant we said that we make the current depend on, depend on some on chip resistance bias current is uh, some v ref by r to make the swing independent of resistor variations and there are a few more things that uh, i'd like to discuss basically these are some practical problems and i think some of you already know how to take care of such things so one thing we have to worry about is let's say this is the transmitter so right now there is no equalization because i have only one tap but if i have more taps i simply add those things in parallel and i have the reference current going into a diode connected transistor so the vgs of, the vds of this transistor is different from the vds of this transistor so the current mirroring may not be accurate and also what happens is when you make high speed transmitters you also tend to use small transistors generally you uh, tend to use small transistors definitely for the switch but also here maybe it's not the minimum length but it may be twice or three times the minimum length it still does not have very high output resistance okay so how can you and also you bias this on the verge of uh, triode region because you want to maximize the swing so the only way to do that is to bias this close to triode region okay so this has a vts across it and this has a very small voltage let's say vd sat 100 millivolts or 150 millivolts across it and the difference can be quite significant maybe the vgs is 500 millivolts the vds is 100 millivolts so the current can be quite different from each other how can i fix this situation cas code what so i leave a cas code mirror okay that is one suggestion instead of using a simple mirror at the bottom maybe i leave a cas code mirror so this is the idea and this is biased to some voltage and i connect it like this so will this help so it, what is the what are the pros and cons of this approach current definitely the output impedance of a cas output resistance of a cas code is higher so the current mirroring is definitely more accurate swing can uh, the swing is smaller that is swing can be smaller because you have to accommodate two transistors so you will have a problem so okay let's uh, first finish this the the current mirroring is more accurate but because you have to accommodate two transistors you may have to have you you have to have more headroom and you have to keep in mind that already in this case we want to talk about a very small headroom of uh, let's say 100 to 150 millivolts if this was large let's say if this was uh, 300 millivolts then it is possible to design a cas code for 300 millivolts that is you make each of the vds at 150 millivolts and it's fine but if it is already 100 to 150 millivolts you can't accommodate two transistors in that headroom okay within uh, 100 or 150 millivolts is this point clear it also depends on the absolute value okay if i had 500 millivolts here i can make each of them 250 millivolts and it's fine this mirror will be better and it will also be more accurate but if i have only 100 millivolts i can it's very hard for me to accommodate two transistors okay so this can be done but uh, the price that you pay is that uh, you have lowered headroom so if you have cas code you will have uh, better accuracy headroom is a general term for uh, the amount of voltage that you have 
to accommodate some circuit. So what else can you do? So the problem here is that this is uh, this is a different VDS than this. So I don't really need to use a cast code. What I need to do is to somehow make this VDS equal to this one. Okay. How how can I do that? So let's uh, let's do something different here. So I need to replicate the same VDS at the two points. So I can do that by biasing this to a certain value. Let me call it VX for now. And I can perhaps do something of this sort. And what should VX be? So essentially we need the same drop across this transistor as we have in the actual differential pair. So we set VX to be the common mode input to the differential pair. Okay. And you make sure that the current density in, let me call this M1, M2 and M0 and this one I will call M0A and M1A. The current density in M0A should be the same as current density in M0. By current density I mean the current divided by the width of the transistor. The length will be the same and the same thing for M1A and M1. So let us say M0A has a width of W by L, M0 has a width of n times w by l and let us say m1 has a width of uh, n times w by 1 by l1 what should m 1a have should be 2 times w1 by l1 because the current flowing here is twice the current flowing here whereas the current flowing here is the same as the current flowing here. So the current densities have to be the same if the current densities are the same and of course the lengths I assume are the same. So M0 and M0A have the same length and M1, M2 and M1A have the same length. It is not of course necessary that M0, M1 and M2 have all the same lengths. And this is known as uh, replica biasing that is in the bias branch you use the replica of the actual circuit so that the bias conditions are replicated. So if this uh, current is I0 by N, a current I0 will flow here. In absence of mismatch, this mirroring will be perfect. Okay. What is the potential problem with this circuit? The problem is now this voltage is the same as the gate voltage of this. So, depending on the value of VCM, this can go into M1A can go into triode region. So, you imagine that uh, you have designed the circuit and for a different condition, you have to operate with a different VCM. You simply keep on raising the value of VCM, you will see that at some point or other, M1A will go into triode region. Okay. So, to get rid of this, what can we do to get rid of this problem? So, we have a direct connection from here to here that should not be the case. Okay. What can we do to fix this? So, essentially we need, uh, we could have, a, we need a level shift from here to here okay. and that can be done in uh, various ways. So, you can have an NMOS source follower which will do the level shifting or you can have a you can have an op amp like some more complicated structure which will do the level shifting. This is the replica device and this is the bias device and a certain current is supposed to go here. So one solution is to use an NMOS source follower. So this is let us say VCM plus VI by 2, VCM minus VI by 2 and this is VCM. So in the quiescent condition the mirroring is accurate. Is the circuit complete? We need a current source for the NMOS. So, how do we generate that? So, we can make a current source and we need to bias this, but there is already a reference voltage available here. So, we can connect it to this. Okay. What happens if there is no loop? What is the objective of this, uh, this branch? What is the objective of the branch? Why do we have that? Yeah. So, what does it provide actually to this part of the circuit? So, it provides a gate to source voltage which is the appropriate value to get generate a certain amount of current. So, how do you do that? What is the principle behind the circuit? So, a transistor is a unilateral device right? You apply gate source voltage and you get the current out. But then you want to uh, get the gate source voltage that is applicable for a given current. How do you do that? No, no that may be fine. It is in saturation that is okay. But now, my input to this part of the circuit is a current, this is the input and the output is this gate to source voltage. How do I achieve that? A transistor is a unilateral device. If you apply gate source voltage, it will give you a current. You cannot apply current and get the gate source voltage. 
but I somehow I am was getting it. How did I do that? Yeah, what, what's the idea? Like, so in this case, definitely I am not connecting drain to the gate, right? So neither am I in this case or here. It's only here that I was connecting drain to gate. Here I have done something else. What's the principle behind a circuit like this? So it is negative feedback, right? So you sense the current that is you sense the current that is flowing out of this. So this is the current flowing through the transistor, and this is a common gate current buffer. The output current is the same as input current, so I can also sense it here. So I sense the difference between the currents and feed a quantity proportional to that in the opposite sense back to the gate. That's the idea. So, so all I know is if this current ID is if ID is more than I know, what do I know, need to do to the VCS? I have to reduce it. Similarly, if ID is less, I have to increase it. Now the diode connection comes from observing the coincidence that if ID is more than I not, the drain voltage is then drain voltage falls down because the difference current charges the parasitic capacitors and it tends to pull it down. Similarly, if I not is more than ID, this node tends to move up in voltage. So one thing I could say is it is varying in the same sense, so I can try to connect it. But of course, it's not enough for it to just vary in the same direction. The absolute values have to be right. Meaning the transistor was assumed to be in saturation, we should check if it is in saturation and in this case it is still in saturation. But all I want is if the drain voltage increases, I want the gate voltage to increase. I do not necessarily need a direct connection. So I can have any stage I want here as long as it has a positive incremental gain. So that this voltage increases and this voltage increases. So that's why I need the loop. Without the loop, I will not get the VGS. Okay. So in this particular case, the positive gain amplifier I've used is a source follower. But I can use something else. What else can I use? So I can also do this. Okay, where this is connected to some reference voltage. So that's connected to the reference voltage. I can also do that. How do I implement that? No, this uh, this amplifier. There are various ways of implementing it. Basically, it's a differential pair, right? In this case, so instead of uh, having this, this part of it, I'll have a differential pair doing the same thing. So the op amp can be realized as potentially as a CMOS differential pair. And I need non-inverting gain between this and this, so I can connect this part to this. Okay. And this needs to be biased with some current source. So complete the circuit. I know that if I have a differential pair, I get positive incremental gain from here to here. But what else do I need here? How can I? What do I? What do I connect here and here? Diode connected N MOS. And what about this? This. Is this okay? Gate of which one? So firstly, does the circuit work? What is the problem with it? What is the problem with the circuit? The op amp output is constant. What do you mean? No, I mean if you have a, if you have an op amp circuit with a constant input, the output will be constant. That's okay. What is the problem with this circuit? I'm not talking about whether it's optimal or not. But it's, is there a problem with the functionality of the circuit? There is no negative feedback, why not? There is a direction of feedback is? Oh, you mean it's positive feedback loop. Okay, what is the problem with this circuit as it is drawn? Sir, I, uh, there are many other ways of implementing it. That's not my concern. Is the does this circuit work as I expected to? Oh no. Op amp has lost its what? What is the problem? Is there a problem? If there is no problem, just say that. There are two current sources, where? Yeah, so the question is what is this voltage? So it is uh, a high impedance current source from this, if everything is working in saturation, which is what we want, it is a high impedance source driving into a high impedance node. So this will be uncertain. So what is going to happen in a real circuit? It will go to one of the two sides. So what is the problem then? So you are saying that uh, this voltage will rise up or fall down. So what is the problem? So let us say that this voltage has fallen down because of some imbalance it tends to go down and it is close to 0 volts. 
What is the problem with it? Now where is it going into triode? If this voltage falls down, what is going into triode? So almost the entire current will be going, will flow through this. So there is still a negative feedback loop, but if almost the entire current is steered here, the response to an increment at this in the current in this line will be very small. Okay, so the GM of the transistor, GM of the differential pair will be very small. Now we are not talking about the transconductance at the quiescent condition. We are talking about when the current is almost here to one side. So the loop gain will be very small. So it won't work very well. Okay. Similarly, if uh, this grows up, if this voltage tends to go up because of the the way imbalances are in the circuit, then all of the current will be steered to the other side, and you again have the same problem. Okay. The incremental uh, GM of uh, this differential pair will become very small. So clearly this is not the way it should be biased. It should be biased so that this voltage will be at some definite voltage which will maintain the differential pair transistors in these two transistors in saturation region. So what, how do I do that? What are the different ways I can think of doing? Maybe again there is, I am cramped for room here. So I will draw just this part of the circuit. So this is the replica branch and this is some VREP. So what do I do with these two? So one, uh, this side we already connected as a diode and connected it here. What do I do with the other one? And what do I do here? Voltage same as this. So that's uh, I can do that by connecting it here. <laughs> then what do I do? Feedback? Feedback direction goes. If you do this, yeah, no, 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 there is no, there is no connection here, okay, you are saying independently I bias it, to, so if this is uh, some V bias, I generate V bias, I have something against this particular V bias, so I, but I generate the exact same voltage in some other way and I connect it here. <laughs> so what does this accomplish? Uh, just now we discussed some problem regarding where this voltage will be, right, does that go away? Is it still there or has it gone away? No, we are discussing something for the last five minutes. <laughs> Does that discussion still valid or no? The thing was you have a current source driving another current source. So what happens to this voltage? And the conclusion was it will either go towards zero or towards uh, VDD. So the first thing just to fix the circuit if everything is connected with minimal effort is simply to direct connect this. Okay. So this will work. Will it or will it not? And let's say this is the circuit. How do you choose the sizes of? Uh, so let's say this is I naught. Like how do you choose the sizes of uh, M X and M Y? Obviously, are a differential pair. They are identical. And let's say that we want uh, we want the differential pair to operate symmetrically. So this M Z and M W are also identical to each other. But uh, what is the size of M Z? So not the size, but we choose the current density is M in this to be the same as the current density in. M0A. Why? No, this is negative feedback circuit, right? So, the current I0 is flowing through M0A. So, V bias is going to be whatever is required to conduct I0 through M0A. See, what he said was, the current density in M0A should be the same as the current density in MZ. Why? What happens if it is not? It is okay not to have the current density is the same? Okay, so you are saying that if you, if the current density is in M0 and M0 are not designed to be equal, the current in these two branches will not be Ix by 2. This will be Ix by 2 plus something and this will be Ix by 2 minus something. So what is the consequence of this? So this voltage will not be equal to Vref, that is all. Okay, so if that is a concern to avoid that kind of systematic offset, you make the current density in this equal to the current density in this. So that in absence of any mismatches, in steady state, you will get Ix by 2 and Ix by 2 here and this will be exactly equal to Vref. Okay. So when you draw the ideal op amp circuit, you assume that this voltage will be at Vref. But that will be at Vref only if the op amp does not have an offset. And systematic offset is something that you should definitely avoid because it is systematic and you know what it is. Okay. So that is the reason why this will be different from Vref. Oh, why there will be a difference in current densities? No, if there are, if the, if this current density and this current density are not the same, that is, what I mean is, when Ix by 2 flows here, there will be some VGS, 
but that VGS is different from the VGS required to make I0 flow through this. So what happens is when eventually when the loop stabilizes I0 will flow through this. So the VGS here will be different from what you need to make IX by 2 flow through this one. So this will not be IX by 2 and this will also not be IX by 2. That's all. So there will be a difference voltage between these two. Anyway think about it. So this is one way to fix it and if you do it this way you make the current density is the same. The other way is what uh, he was pointing out. So you diode connect this transistor, you do this and you connect it here. Okay. So what is the difference between this and the previous circuit? This will have a greater loop gain. So anyway think about this. What should this VREF be? So if you want uh, there are there were various degrees of uh, replication right. First we connected the diode connected transistor to this. In that case even the VDS was not replicated. Then we had different circuits. So we had a circuit like this in which the VDS of this was replicated but the VDS of this and VDS is this were different. Now with this particular circuit we have the freedom to set this value that is whatever is VREF will appear here. So we can make the VDS of this equal to VDS of this also VDS of this equal to VDS of this giving you the best possible replication. The output common mode voltage will be VDD minus if this is I tail I think I messed up the notations all over the place but uh, hopefully you will get the idea. So VDD minus I tail R by 2. So if this VREF is VDD minus I tail R by 2 this will be exactly VDD minus I tail R by 2. So this will have the same VDS as this one. VCVS how will you make the VCVS? Connect, connect this to this. No, no, no. Because this is a see. Yeah. You don't have to do that. See, you can just you have some current here, so you can generate it using a current source and a resistor. But then that will give you a complicated common mode feedback loop, and generally you don't want to mess around with the high frequency nodes at the output. Yeah, that's a copy. Is, copy is what this is, right? Okay. So if you wanted more accurate, you can connect another. No, no, we are not. See, this is the high speed part of the circuit. No, we will not do that. We will not detect the output common mode and do this. So we will just give a rough replica which is close to this. That is enough. Okay. It will all be open loop and that is what replica biasing means, right? Replica is not a, it is not like sensing the output and feeding it. You just make two identical circuits and hope that they are equal. That is what replica is. So I think, uh, have you guys seen this type of circuits in filter design or analog ACs? You must have seen anyway. Right? So I do not want to spend too much more time on this, but uh, there are ways of making current mirroring accurate even with short channel transistors that is the bottom line. And to do that you have to rely on matching that not just uh, VGS has to be the same, but VDS also has to be the same. So you need some replication of uh, the conditions in the actual differential pair. So any other questions on this biasing stuff? So you are please go and think about it and if you have some uh, doubts about how it works we can discuss it in the next class. So there was one last thing I wanted to discuss regarding these transmitters and let us say we have AC coupled outputs. What is the output common mode voltage? What is the common mode voltage here? VDD minus I naught R by 2. What is the differential peak to peak swing here? I naught R. So it does not have to be AC coupled but I am just taking that condition. Swing is I naught R and this is it. So let us say I designed the circuit and I made I naught R as large as possible. If I made it any larger this would go into triode region okay, because of the common mode which lowers which uh, goes low if I increase the value of I naught R. Okay. But I still have to increase the value of I naught R because the specification says that I have to do it. So what can I do? That is I have designed the circuit and I have used the minimum amount of voltage possible across this and this is also on the verge of triode region in the quiescent condition. But I have to absolutely increase the value of the output swing. So what is that? And of course I can't change R. So what can I do? Connect this to VDD. How will that help? No, this is AC coupled. That is only if you have DC coupling. Okay. So what can I do to? Of course I want to keep these things in uh, saturation region, but I want to increase the swing, and I also don't want to change the load resistance. So that means basically I have to somehow be able to increase this I naught R right to increase the swing or something I do not know. 
So I have to increase I naught. If I increase I naught, this uh, common mode will lower further and it will push the transistors into triode region. I don't want that. So think about uh, possible solutions to this. Current source parallel to the resistor. Actually, that's a very good idea. So what will this do? What will be the value of this? I mean, what's the potential value of this? Like, what would you choose it to be? Yeah. Okay. Something like. So let's say this is I naught by four and I naught by four. Okay. Just for illustration. So in quiescent condition, I naught by four flows through this. I naught by four flows through the resistors. Okay. What is the output common mode voltage? So the output common mode voltage is reduced to VTD minus I naught R by four. What is the output swing? That is the output peak to peak swing is what I am concerned with. It will be the same I naught R, but I have managed to raise the output common mode voltage. So now I can increase I naught without the without fear that this will go into triode region. Okay. So this is one. Uh, this is something that I can use. So think about this. Think about the implementation and what potential disadvantage is there. Okay.